I found these boots so unique, I had to review them earlier than I planned. G'day, welcome back to Bootlosophy. If you're new here, my name is Tech. I acknowledge the traditional custodians of the lands and waters I live and work on, the Wajit people. Now, this is the Russell Moccasin Backcountry Boot. It is my first real moccasin construction boot, and I'm so taken by it that I decided to bring you a review straight away. If you subscribe to my channel, you know that I usually review boots after at least a month more often after two or three months of receiving a pair of boots. I want to uh, really break them in, wear them in different situations, get to know the fit and feel, uh, research the brand and the construction, try them on with different outfits so I can bring you a more rounded review. But if you do follow my channel, you will also know that I only unboxed this pair just two weeks ago. If you haven't seen it, you can follow this link up here. Honestly, I was so impressed by wearing them around that I got excited to dive into them. I honestly haven't been as excited about a pair of boots since I bought my first Grail boot, my first White's MP boot. So what's so impressive about them? Let's go through this. Before we start, know that I got this pair for review. This video isn't sponsored and I'm not being paid. Uh, Russell Moccasin didn't vet this video or tell me what to say. So what I say in here is my real and my most objective feelings that I can express. So let's go to style and aesthetics. In terms of style and aesthetics, at least on the surface, this is not different than some of my other Mokto boots that I've already brought to you. Check out my White's Fulton boot review up there. Uh, the panels around the sides kind of look like Grant Stone's field boot as well, don't they? Uh, and the Mokto? Yeah, we've all seen this type of Mokto before in the Red Wing 875, uh, Grant Stone's earlier brass boot, uh, and from Thoroughgood's classic Mokto, right? Here's that stitch uh, that goes around the apron of the van. Uh, here's that high sidewall, that profile that has the straight up sides at the toe box. It has a seven inch shaft measured from the top of the heel, a single piece backstay that curls into a pull loop. Uh, it has a relatively low commando lug sole with a relatively low block heel. The stitching around the mock toe looks clearly hand stitched to me and the reinforcing stitch uh, at, the, at the corner of the quarters is, is nice and beefy. It uses brass hardware including speed hooks that they call army studs. The collar has some really interesting detail with the pinking. But what's really unique about this, at least for me, is that this is a real moccasin design. The vamp is lasted from underneath, not from top down, but I'll get into that later. Now, spoiler alert, I'm about to tell you that this feels like it's going to become my everyday wear boot, but it's clearly an outdoor boot. So when I'm not hiking, uh, when I wear it, it will be with casual clothes and not for wear into a professional office like my own management consultancy company. Having said that though, I think this will work with outdoor gear like jeans and flannels and wax jackets of course, as it will with casual pants like chinos and canvas pants, t-shirts and all kinds of casual shirts from the uh, smart casual to the working in the yard casual. I have no photos of me trying this with different outfits to show you because this is so new on my feet. But what I recommend for the Fulton, uh, for the Red Wing 875 which you can see up there, for any other mock toe that I've ever reviewed, what I recommend there will go with this. Let's talk about history. Russell Moccasin, or more exactly, W.C. Russell Moccasin, is an over 125 year old company founded by William Russell. Russell was a leather craftsman who worked for his father alongside his brother Frank. Russell wanted his own business, so uh, in 1898 he found the capital and the opportunity to invest and he bought a shoemaking company and used its equipment to start his own W.C. Russell Moccasin Company based in Berlin in Wisconsin. Now, my American geography is terrible, <laughs> but thank goodness for Google Maps. For us non-Americans watching, Wisconsin is the state north of Illinois, which is where Chicago is, and Chicago I know well since I worked there for three months. Wisconsin is also on the Great Lakes and it has a northern border with Canada. Along with my poor knowledge of American geography, 
I had always equated moccasin shoes with the northeastern states of the United States in New England. Uh, so I was surprised to see in the maps that Wisconsin is so much further west. But I suppose the tradition of First Nations moccasin construction would have stretched all the way across the Great Lakes, if not everywhere else. Russell first made his boots for the logging industry. That's a familiar refrain, isn't it? But they then became popular amongst hunters, fishermen, uh, hikers, because of the benefits of the true moccasin construction. When Russell passed away in the 1920s, the company changed hands to one of their traveling salesmen, Bill Gustin, uh, and continued developing the outdoor use theme. The Russell Bird Shooter, on which this is based, came out in the 1930s, uh, along with things outside of my ken, <laughs> Oxfords, loafers, and other non-boots that I know nothing about. It remained in family hands until 2022, when it was bought by Luke Colby and his two partners, Joe Julian, and Russell's production manager, Joe Gonio. Here's a few famous landmarks in history involving Russell Moccasin. In 1931, wearing Russell Moccasins, Charles Lindbergh, of Spirit of St. Louis fame, flew across the top from New York to Alaska, to Siberia, and then to Japan and China. In 1935, Wiley Post, another flight pioneer, developed a pressure suit and flew 30,000 to 40,000 feet high into the stratosphere. While he may have been wearing his pressure suit, he had on a pair of bird shooters on his feet. <laughs> In 1948, Earl Schaffer became the first person to walk the entire 2,000 mile Appalachian Trail, during which he wore a single pair of bird shooters that lasted the distance. So if it impresses you, this has some impressive history. Right, now, here we go. Let's look at this unique construction. If you subscribe to my channel, you'll have heard me talk about how the construction of mock toe boots is really a mock mock toe, uh, like in this review up here of the Thorogood Classic Mock Toe Work Boot. I will often make a joke that the olden Indy, for example, is a mock 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 toe, <laughs> because it mocks a mock toe in having a cosmetic stitch and other mock toes like the Thurgood mock a real mock toe because they don't have two pieces making up the van. Well, this is a real, real, real mock toe, because not only are there two pieces of leather stitched together at the apron, but this is actually constructed as a real moccasin. In our usual view of boots, they are lasted, uh, the uppers are pulled around the last, from the top down. Then the uppers are attached via midsole or welt to the sole construction. Now get that out of your head. This backcountry boot is lasted from the bottom up. The vamp piece is a piece of leather that's stitched to the quarters and then lasted from the bottom and fastened to the top of the last. Then a midsole is Blake stitched to the bottom of that upside down vamp. Then the top apron piece is stitched to the edge of the upside down vamp. And you'll see here that the apron piece is rolled over the edge of that upside down vamp before it's all hand stitched together around the apron. Obviously, that helps greatly with water resistance because of that roll of leather to protect the joint. But wait, water resistance? Don't I always say that Blake stitched boots are not as water resistant as Goodyear welted or stitched down boots because that Blake stitch on the inside goes all the way through from outside to inside? Well, this is what Russell Moccasin calls a double vamp boot. Inside the boot, they slip in a second vamp, like a sock. And that one is not stitched through by the Blake stitch, but instead sits on top of it with its own stitches above the Blake stitching. The inside vamp sits around uh, the whole of the forefoot with a stitch holding it closed at the top of the instep and in the back the inner vamp sits up to the level of the quarters. So in this way and due to the heavily oil infused leather forms a kind of natural Gore-Tex lining around the front and bottom and sides of the boot. The top of the quarters are unlined but the tongue is a three-quarter gusseted up to between the first and second eyelets. Now this is a kilty from Dale's Leatherworks and it doesn't come with the back country. Um, the back stay at the back covers the seam and turns into a pull loop, which despite my usual irritation with pull loops, is very useful in this taller boot, particularly in this very really soft leather. The toe box is unstructured, but the heel counter that's inside between the uh, outer vamp and the inner vamp is oak tanned leather and you can feel its rigidity. 
Inside on the footbed is a leather three-quarter sock liner that goes up to there for comfort. The top of the collar is rolled and not only rolled as it's stitched on, it shows these pink edges. I guess they're decorative rather than functional, but I do like them. The hardware is brass, really firmly put on, even though the speed hooks are just pressed on at the back rather than washered. The eyelets though, they are washered. Down at the bottom, the midsole is veg tanned and a thin rubber midsole is stitched to it like a welted stitch and then the uh, rubber vibram outsole is glued onto that rubber slip sole. The outsole is a vibram rochia outsole, commando lugged and softer compound, so very, very grippy, uh, particularly on rough stuff as well as on wet concrete pavements. The upper's leather is called Timberjack and the colour is Walnut. Timberjack is tanned by SB Foot, the tannery owned by Red Wing. And from what I can find in my research uh, and on what I feel on my hand, it's a heavily oil tanned leather. Uh, and also from my feel, probably tumbled because it is so soft and supple, it feels like Tharagood's tumbled oil tanned leathers. It doesn't collapse and has a medium feel of rigidity, but it is certainly soft enough to push over. It is uh, matte in appearance, has a slight pull up, I guess showing the oils inside. As an oily waxy leather, it sure feels water resistant and I have put it to the test. As it's only been a couple of weeks since I got this pair and my wife had a surgical procedure recently, I haven't been able to get too far away from home. I haven't been uh, hiking, but I decided to be a vagrant vandal <laughs> on one of my morning walks and I stepped into a man-made running stream in our local park. Uh, the water came up to my ankles, really fast flowing water. I stood there for a good, I think it was five or six minutes before mum's walk, uh, walking with prams went by and started looking funny at me. So then I got out and I walked away very briskly. Not a drop on the inside and the moisture just beaded off and shook off, uh, just shook off the boot as I ran away. <laughs> yep, water resistant, if not for all practical purposes, waterproof. In terms of leather care, I don't have much information, so if I apply my experience of different leathers and common sense, I would apply the usual principles. Brush often to keep it clean of sand and grit, which is what can damage your leather the most. It is a waxy mat, so in conditioning, I'd use a waxy balm like Obanoffs. For what it's worth, by the way, the Russell site says to use Obanoffs. It might darken, but this ain't no fashion boot, right? It's practical and outdoorsy and open off so something similar like say R.M. Williams' saddle dressing that's full of waxiness will condition and waterproof this leather. As for sizing, Russell Moccasin advises going a half size down from your Brannock size. Many of you will uh, already know my Brannock size is US 8.5 in D width. I wear New Balance sneakers in a 9 and I wear Iron Rangers and most American Heritage boots in an 8D. Following the advice on their website, I ordered an 8D and these fit me so perfectly. Now, let's talk about the most important thing about these boots and why I got so excited and why I think this will be my go-to everyday boot for when I'm in a relaxed mode. The fit and the comfort. Let me first set the scenario that most of you will be able to relate to. When you put on your Goodyear welted or stitch down boot, you get two immediate sensations. First, as comfy as any of your boots are, as good a fit as uh, the best last that suits your feet, the uppers cover your feet with some firmness. We like it. This is a manly boot, we say to ourselves. It feels tough and rugged. Second, we feel that we stand on a platform. In some videos, I've called it a raft. You feel the leather and cork or whatever below your feet. It's rigid. Your feet, with, with some room, uh, slip on and over this platform, but it's there, as comfy as it is, and as much as uh, your feet mould into the leather and cork, it still feels like you're standing on something, a platform. When you uh, walk over mushy ground or loose sand, your platform sinks, and yes, you get feedback, but it's translated through a platform. The platform stays rigid. You know you are in soft stuff because you sank, but your feet move in relation to a rigid platform. When you stand on a rock or roots, you stand on a part of your platform. In fact, you, you tend to rock on that root or that rock, uh, steady as you might be. That platform is flat and it rocks on the round thing you're standing on. 
You agree, right? Then you put these on. Your first sensation is that your feet are cupped, not just bound by, not just clasped in a firm handshake, but cupped and softly hugged, not in a snug, but in a soft yet firm embrace. Then you walk and the feedback is immediate. Walking indoors on tiles or carpet, it's flat, you know that, yet your feet rock ever so slightly. The feel of the boot moving as one with your feet. It's not unsteady, it's like, it's like you're barefoot and the, the, the two layers move together. When you walk outdoors, your feet spread, your toes spread and grip like you're barefoot. You walk on mushy stuff, on oh, loose sand for example, or mud, and the sensation is like your own feet squishing into the mud and your toes gripping into the sand. You're, you're fully protected, mind. Never do you feel like you're unsteady or that uh, something is going to pierce your foot. When you stand on a rock or root, it doesn't hurt, but your feet curl a little around the object. It doesn't rock on a platform as much. The sensation is, it, well, it's almost indescribable. I've been struggling with how I put it into words. It's a feeling and I like it. Okay, feels good. How much does this cost? This makeup is 750 US dollars. Now that puts it into Pacific Northwest territory. The construction is not dissimilar, perhaps a little less handmade in the mix, but definitely within the tradition. From what I can see, the QC is no different. It may be even slightly better. The stitches are secure and clean, but they are outdoorsy stitches, just like my whites and like my Nyx boots. They weren't made finely to look like it can be worn to a ball, uh, like a Viberg. I love the comfort of my overbuilt PNW boots with the, well, I don't know, gazillion leathers, uh, layers of leather under my feet. But I do also love the free feel of the comfort of these. This is my first moccasin constructed boot, lighter and more flexible than my PNW boots. So I, I may just be expressing surprise of how good they feel and the uniqueness of them, but I really do think they're worth it for that reason. I don't know if I'm going to ever walk 2,000 miles straight in these, probably not, but I do believe that I'd be fresh as a daisy at the end if I did. My everlasting impression of these is that I'm wearing a sturdy yet comfortable boot. I feel like I'm in the bedroom slippers I had as a kid, but beefed up. I really feel the feedback most of all on what I'm stepping on without any feeling of loss of balance or security. Yes, I think these will become my everyday go-to boot for anything casual or shopping or whatever I do when I want to feel comfy. And I can't wait until I'm back to my weekend hikes after my wife recovers and I go through my own surgery. These are going to be on my feet and I'm going to retire my most used Timberland hiking boots. When I do that, I'll bring you another review of how these perform out in the wild. So help me out by clicking on like and keep in touch by subscribing. I drop at least one video every week and you won't miss any of my in-depth reviews if you subscribe. Take care then and until the next time, see you later.